Imagine a vibrant discussion between people that includes both openness and critical thought in the pursuit of truth. The Purchasing Truth Podcast is an experience, a journey, an exploration of the impact that negative messages in politics and the media have on our families, community, society, and nation. Join your hosts, Bill Sterling and Tom Hazard, to discover new concepts and language strategies that will reveal effective ways of establishing truth. This podcast series will tackle current events, leadership challenges, healthcare confusion, integrity in business, and many other areas that affect us all. Gain clarity and understanding of the various truth perspectives. Welcome to Purchasing Truth. Hey everyone, welcome back to Purchasing Truth. I'm Tom Hazard, along with your host, Bill Sterley. And Bill, as we've been talking, preparing for recording today, we decided we really want to put some definition on two terms that are being thrown around left and right in the media and in really all kinds of reporting, written, uh, video, audio, Uh, put some definition on it and try to understand it and and discuss some examples. And that is the difference between misinformation and disinformation. And I I almost feel like these words have been used interchangeably. And that's not very helpful, I think. Yeah, I think so too, Tom. The uh, one of the hardest part about our discussion today is going to be, um, um, just doing some scary honesty about that, you know, people don't want to admit mistakes. People don't want to talk about things that go wrong or that there's something they don't have or something they're bad at or something they don't have skill at. They'd rather pump themselves up and say, you know what, listen, I can do that. Or I have that thing, or I didn't make that mistake, or I didn't spill the milk or this. So misinformation and disinformation is practiced slash hard baked into, you know, our, you know, our way of doing things, because if you can't, if you can't face the truth safely, then you learn strategies of misinformation and different disinformation. This is not just, this is not about politics. This is not, a, not just about business. This is about family. This is about human interaction. So even though our show has a political piece to it, this has to do with what do you say or how can you make mistakes not be catastrophic and, and stuff. So, so on, on a sports team, we're forgiving of we don't like it when a player makes a penalty at the wrong time but because we're loyal to the team we learn how to get over it and say well that player is just doing the best they can on our team rather than just saying you know you know you know get rid of them cut them right then that if they keep doing it you might do it but we're trying to work with the skill and the mastery of the player and that regrettably there the window of being able to talk about disinformation and misinformation and making mistakes is really tiny. I mean, you do it and social media will jump all over us. So, uh, so that's why I'm kind of excited to talk about it because today, because it's not just about how politicians can't tell the truth, but it's like, there's no room to do it. Does that make some sense? It, it does make sense, Bill. And what, what occurred to me as you're saying that is on, on the disinformation side of things, and I know we haven't defined it yet, we're getting there. Yeah. Um, there really would seem to me to be a scale of disinformation, almost like we have, you know, the truth scale that we've talked about. There are levels of disinformation, for instance, right? you know, um, yeah, loyalty to family, you know, how are things with the family? Everything's great. You know, I mean, th- there's, there's going to be a level of disinformation that, all right, we're not going to reveal that we have these, you know, a couple of problems going on in our family. They're private, they're family stuff. And, but to the world, we're going to say everything's great. 
In fact, in business, one of the early lessons I was taught too, when especially a company that is a rival or a competitor or, or to anybody you interact with in business, you know, hey, how's business? Better than good. You know, that was like one response that I always thought, was, you know, better okay. than good or, you know, uh, business is great. Even if business isn't great, you right. don't want to get a rumor mill going out there that, oh, that business is struggling. They're having trouble. So there's there's, I think, some disinformation. Yes, that's the little white lie equivalent, maybe. Right. That's, that that's correct. That's right. And you're you're still you're, you're still positioning yourself for a for confidence, for strength, for command, for I've got this, uh, I've got this little ship of mine, this business, whatever level I'm pay, playing in and doing, I'm doing good about how's work works fine. You know, so there is this range of information, disinformation and misinformation that you're not going to disclose the range of truth. And because, you know, that's one of the challenges. Now, what winds up happening both in business and in politics and our personal life, it's my truth is this. The good reason why I took the car was because and didn't ask you because you might have said no. That's the truth. <laughs> that's the I would rather apologize than ask permission strategy, right? I, I, I have seen that done in business and I've seen that done in politics and I've seen that done in the person in our by personal life, all three. There's the disinformation and information in regards to that and the ownership. See, like a disinformation, getting back to the definition, is um, using you know unknowingness to keep a person distracted. It's it's a good, it's loyal and reinforcing, you know, towards a false belief. I'm I'm going to give information over here. Um, uh, Rick DeSantis just did that the other day. Um, there's a problem with immigrants in the law, you know, immigrants uh, at the thing and oh, yeah, yeah. because of Florida's uh, COVID thing. And the answer is that's a thousand miles away. And it's a really, it's really not true, but the disinformation is, is that uh, uh, the last president got elected on demonizing immigrants. I'm going to do the same thing. Sure. So that's that's a that's yeah. a disinformation. Are there problems with our immigration laws? Yes. Is there a path to citizenship that is viable in our country? No. Is there <laughs> because because as soon as you solve one of those things, it doesn't give a a party or a group something to vote uh, something to rally their voters on. So, like for example, when uh, Ronald Reagan, you know, uh, started the clean slate with immigrants and said, okay, everybody that's here, you're now Americans. We're all starting from things. That was a Republican that let all immigrants up to that point in and said, we're going to process you. We're going to, you're now part of the family. We're bringing you into the fold. That's what I do. And guess what? The next, it didn't give them a ability to run on we know we're doing something about the immigrants because we solve the problem sort of <laughs> well they solved one problem but didn't didn't really prepare for the perpetual problem that continues no they did not so it's information disinformation and is it plays into that you know, it's like, oh, it definitely know. does. I, I like your example of Florida and Ron DeSantis, because, yes, to, to put it maybe a little more simply for our listeners, he said, hey, our problem with the surge in covid infections in Florida is because the Biden administration is just letting anybody through the border. And these immigrants are coming over the border with covid. That's why we have covid in Florida. And, you know, that's that's a good talking point for his base because you're right it plays into the same thing that trump ran on and got to the white house on but 
the reality of, well, that border is over in Texas, way around the Gulf. I mean, is everybody coming across from Mexico in boats to Florida? I mean, I know there's a few people doing that from Cuba, but not really. Uh, so, and, and not only that, but if you peel back the onion, you'll find out that the Biden administration, in fact, especially because of COVID, is turning away adults at the border. They're only letting unaccompanied children in. Children and if cross. you look at the stats of how many of them have COVID, it's very, very low. And the protocols for what to do with them if they do have COVID is, is very strict. None of those people coming in in Texas and Arizona and New Mexico are getting to Florida. So that is definitely disinformation because Ron Santos is taking He's stripping away context. We talked about this a couple episodes ago, but with the Daily Wire there, he's stripping away context and taking a partial truth of, yes, some immigrants coming across the border have COVID. There's a partial truth there. But then saying they're coming to Florida and they're the cause of our COVID surge. That is you know, definitely on the truth scale, pretty far down away from truth. Correct. Correct. There's going to be a scaling of things. And we did a whole episode of observation is the closest you can be to truth. Then evaluation, then judgment, (laughs) then labels, then criticism, then blame, then shame. All of those things are as far away from truth as you can get. Oh, and he was definitely in the blame and shame oh, area blame saying it's the Biden area. administration's fault it's that we have this fault. surge in Florida, right? It's just like, it's like you, you're not doing your part. You're not doing your part in relationship to science. You're not doing your part in relationship to social responsibility. Your citizens aren't doing their part for social responsibility. You would like to tout freedom, independence, choice as the values that you are um, you know, per- portraying at the expense of, well, a person's life, a person's wellness, a person's healing. You know, it's, it's really very, very unsettling. So that leads us into, well, what's the definition then for misinformation? See, Uh, you know, misinformation as a definition is that um, there is the person has the fixed belief already in their head. And they're really actually ignorant of the truth. So all you got to do is drip a little breadcrumb in front of them. And they'll get on the path. Because again, coming back to our premise at the beginning, whether it's politics or business, nobody wants to admit a mistake. A few years back, Toyota had a problem with their cars and it caused deaths. Well, they needed to get through that problem with truth and fixing and recalls and integrity. They need to get through it the owner admitted, hey, we had a problem. I apologize. We're going to fix it and look to restore our brand. Well, that's the path to take. Take your lumps early. Don't keep taking a stick and keep hitting your head overhead with a stick and going like, No, we're not wrong. We're great. We're great. We're the best party ever. It's like, no, you're not. And by the way, you're doing brand damage to Republicans because they're leaving. They can't vote. They'll sit out because you aren't providing something that's energized and vital to Uh, your voters to come back out and vote for you're not in that space so again with the toyota the thing is is that you use an apology but you're backing apologies up with actions that are trustworthy not you're just going giving an apology and then moving on and then not holding the next person accountable so fending fighting for a person um, 
uh, you know, defending and fighting for a company, defending and fighting for a, a party or a sports team all go into that same lump. I, uh, you know, it's like, well, too bad. You know, I apologize. That was a mistake. <laughs> it's like, oh, wait a minute. You're well, not back, backing it up with truth. So, so I, I like what you, where you were, you were saying, Bill, because I think it's, it's very helpful is that misinformation can result from somebody just being ignorant of the facts or the truth. Right. And so there's, there's a couple of good examples of that. Um, one of which it's, it's actually not meant to be political, although it involves a political figure, but it's really a recent example I think is helpful is that, and I've seen this happen with a few other people as well, but um, a reporter asked Marjorie Taylor Green, representative to the House of Representatives from Georgia, if she was vaccinated, if she'd had the COVID-19 vaccine. I think a pretty fair question for a reporter to ask. It's not, yeah. it wasn't really meant to be a gotcha question, just sort of a matter of fact. Hey, are you vaccinated? And I would think if she's not vaccinated, she would be proudly saying she's not vaccinated. Or if she is vaccinated, you know, also uh, just making it more of a matter of fact, right? Well, she says to the reporter, why are you trying to violate my HIPAA rights? So rather than answer the question, attacks the questioner and make and, and uses, throws the, the word HIPAA rights out there, or the phrase, you know, why are you trying to violate my HIPAA rights out there? And just evades, avoids answering the question. Unfortunately, what that really revealed is that Marjorie Taylor Greene, U.S. House of Representatives, is really ignorant of what the HIPAA law does and, and means, because it doesn't say, hey, me as an individual person or you as an individual person or her as an individual person can't answer a question of whether they have received the COVID vaccine or not what the HIPAA law does, and I'm oversimplifying it, but really what it does is says, hey, a healthcare provider or worker, a doctor, a doctor's office and such cannot disclose your personal health records or information without your permission, the patient. It's really a patient bill of rights of sorts. That's right. Where That's it right. gives, but, but certainly the HIPAA laws don't prevent you, the patient or the individual from disclosing your own medical history or facts or anything like that. So I do, I think Marjorie Taylor Greene intentionally was misleading in answering that question. I actually don't think that she was intentionally giving false information or intentionally um, saying that HIPAA not believed know. something. I think she really just didn't know. I think she was kind of ignorant says, of it. And I think that's the big difference. Misinformation, I think, is more when you make a statement that is incorrect, but not necessarily with the intent to deceive. But yeah. disinformation involves intent in trying to propagate a partial truth or use a partial truth to your advantage right. to achieve some some other goal. Would right, that... to, to, to cover something that has to do with our uneasiness, with mistakes, our inability to have integrity and to fall on the sword and to be in alignment with truth instead of being alignment or propagating. Yeah, I, I did that, but you know, you had it coming. It's like, Oh my gosh, or no, you did this, but it's really not my fault. Or uh, I did this, but here's the good reasons why I did this instead of going like, you know, listen, I did this thing and it was out of integrity, you know, and you know, it's, it's um, it's part of, it's part of who, who I am, but it doesn't make it right. People were uncomfortable. And this is where, just to pick on somebody else, is this is where um, uh, Governor Cuomo is getting himself into trouble. Is he's saying, I'm this type of affectionate person. Well, he needs to go further than that. 
I, I am this affectionate type of person. People feel uncomfortable with that. They're com- they have filed a complaint about their uncomfortableness about my physical affection towards them. And as a person who had that affection with others and that Italian nature of mine and that, um, you know, this, I could see how that level of physical touch affects others, as well as the things, the comments that I've made that went too far. And I will take ownership of those comments and those things. Now I've just taken those 11 complaints because there's 11 pretty solid ones and said, these are valid. Those people's point of view, their truth about touch, physical stuff and comments that I've said and done were unprofessional of me. They were not, those people get to complain, not those people need to give me a pass because I'm a touchy person. So you're saying that approaching it from a place of taking accountability for something would have been maybe better. Yeah. Than, you got to like to, to try to say that it isn't, you know, uh, the Inigo Montoya defense, really, which is, right. I don't, don't think this means what you think it means. Think it means. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Which is the disinformation information. Things. It's like, I'm not sure if that word means inconceivable means the, way <laughs> the, the thing is inconceivable. <laughs> it's like, it's like, and, the, and for Bill and I having a little fun here, listeners. So obviously we're talking, uh, we're referencing the movie, the princess bride. And there's, uh, there's this character, this character that keeps using this word inconceivable at all sorts of times. That if you haven't seen the movie, I'm sure a lot of you have. But at times when, when really it doesn't fit, and finally this character, Inigo Montoya, looks at this character, and I forget the other character's name, but he says, you keep using that word. I do not think it means what you think it means. So anyway, uh, that's that really, I mean, that's a good way of sort of talking about what is now becoming the debacle uh, in the New York governor's mansion of, of how he has, you know, this is, it's really actually disappointing and disheartening because for a governor that was seen as a model of leadership a year ago, managing the crisis of COVID-19 in one of the biggest States in the country, he's doing a horrible job. He and his people, whoever's left around him, are doing a horrible job of managing this other crisis of personal behavior and character. Yeah, the, the when when a a group or an individual picks a certain set of values or needs over truth, it doesn't tend to go well. You need to set truth next to it, so. It's like we have this COVID surge and this messaging here next to it, it's, it's a partial truth, but we're still talking about the truth of what I did and what's happening. If you talk about what's happening, honestly, see, even DeSantis could actually do a better job of this. You know what? We are the fifth highest. Uh, we, are, we are the state with the highest uh, infection rates. And that's impacting our hospitals. Start there. Just just admit some facts that start there. You you can't deny anyway. Start there. He, well, he's telling he's telling the truth. We believe the economy is more important than this virus is. Now all of a sudden you're picking a side. Other people would say, yeah. The, the this this is uh, this virus is not going to affect me until it does affect me. It's not affecting me. We're building immunity up to the virus by allowing a certain set of population to die, which is a choice when you don't have medicine. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know if that's going to be a long term, a really good choice. No, but it's not a great it's not a great sale, but it is a choice that they're making. 
And by the way, that's the that's also the Democrats argument. Anybody that's running against DeSantis or Marco Rubio or anything like they've got to go after that with a very simple sentence. It's it's clear what they're choosing. They're choosing the death of their citizens over and the and the setting aside of medical proven uh, numbers for the economy and for the belief that independence, choice, freedom uh, from any kind of control is what they're interested in in the state of Florida. It's not the safest place I'd like to be, but is what they're choosing. Yeah, you know, interestingly, that's that's actually I, I agree with you for a long time, and maybe still, uh, the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis, has been choosing the economy over, you know, the health and safety first. Uh, but most lately, because we're coming up on schools starting back up, people going back yeah. to schools, he's taking a different choice, and that's interesting. He's say, he's saying he's lining up with freedom for parents to choose whether their children wear a mask or not over, you know, mask mandates. In fact, gone to the point of issuing, issuing an executive order that, that says, you know, schools cannot issue a mask mandate. And I don't think that's going to work out very well long-term for the governor very the way short things term, are going. Very, very short term. I, the, the principles arguments that there's been several pr- principles that are on the news that say the following sentence, they go, listen, schools are run by adults. When my adults get sick, I can't run my school. I can't have my, I can't have kids come in here and infecting my adults because my adults run my school. See, I've already had, you know, two custodians die over this. I am not putting two people, two more people's lives in jeopardy when I've lost two adults. I can't run my school. I have to hire two custodians that want to come to a school. They're not going to come to a school that's unmasked. I now have an employment problem. Now, if if that principle had that narrative, the short term, and then just cap it off with, well, I can see what he's going for. I can see what the governor's going for. He's going for you know freedom and independence for Americans to choose. Not in my school. It's not a good fit for us because I need adults to run my school. I need to protect my adults. Well, that's interesting. That's that's one way to go. The other way would to go would also be, you know, we need to meet the needs of health and safety and protection for all the students attending the school, you know, and and meeting the need for freedom at the expense of people's health and safety is not something that we're interested in doing. You know, yes. I mean, that, that's, that's another right, way that, that no, could no. go. Oh, no, that's that would be definitely something to follow it up with. Absolutely. So, the, you know, coming back, I mean, we've got to be able to stick the landing here because there's got to be some kind of solution to this. Right. Right. If somebody uh, speaks to a misinformation or a disinformation, you know, I mean, uh, you know, creating an alternative narrative by going like here is here's a complex issue that cannot be. Uh, distracted or misinformed, we've got to face it straight and making it honest and direct and having compassion towards what that choice is. I have compassion for the state of Florida and the businesses in Florida. I have relatives in Florida. They have businesses. I don't want their businesses to shut down and them have to get receive more money from the federal government in six months because their governor is going to face all these evictions and things like that because he wants to say too bad go back to work take your chances and you don't have to wear a mask and neither neither does anybody else (laughs) it's like wait a minute (laughs) you know it's like it's so short-sighted it's so short-sighted 
you know, and the, and then kind of like you, what you and I do once in a while is that we make light of it or make fun of it to show how kind of like that lot, that kind of thinking has that short sightedness to it. It's going like, you know what, we're, you can, you've got that other thing and we can see that it's costing your people's lives, but really we need to talk to the people and have them wear masks and be convict, uh, have conviction inside the Florida. So it's not until the people of Florida face down their fellow citizens and go like, listen, I got a sick person at home or a family member of mine died of, you know, COVID, you know, get out of this store. You can take your independence and your individuality and your choice, and you can stay at home and do that, not in public around me. And Americans are not in the place because, again, we don't like confrontation, except for, well, that brings up a bigger issue. But yes, we <laughs> almost went, except for foreign wars. We're okay. Yeah, with that. let's We're let's not, not okay let's that. not go yeah, down that right. rabbit hole right now. Um, well, you know, you're right. It's interesting. I mean, I've seen a lot of different um, memes uh, or or you know infographics uh, circulating, you know, social media saying, yeah, you you are an American and you have certain freedoms and certainly you are free to not wear a mask if you don't want to. But that doesn't mean you can wear it coming into my restaurant or going into that store or all these other things because each individual private business can make its own rules about those things you know it's interesting where it's like you know yeah freedom i mean to me it's interesting that desantis is picking freedom of parents to make decisions he, he's trying to taking a stand of individual rights that's right over you know yeah. at, at the expense of the needs of the the greater population of the community that's right and it's and it's really unsettling because i mean a big part of why Florida works the way it does is low taxes and, and people can retire there, but at the, at the same time, they're going to, they're going to retire there just to get sick and COVID and, and, and die. It's like, wait, wait, you're, you're not, uh, you're, you're, you're really messing with the bigger elements of the economy when you do it that way. Well, especially really with is. tourism. I mean, tourism is one of the number one, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, how do you say drivers of the economy in Florida with Disney and universal and cruise ships and all the beaches, the coastline and hotels. I mean, all, all over the entire state it's, it's travel and tourism. Oh my God. It's huge. Right. Right now. There are three cruise ships that I know of that are getting dismantled, torn apart, broken apart because it's cheaper to scrap them than it is to keep them running for the next year. They're literally Carnival Cruise sent three ships to be broken to their got the, I mean, and that that's, that's the consequence, the economic consequence of um, now, what does that, all of those ships with all of that furniture and all of those different things, it's better if they're in parts than if they're staying because it's more cost effective and and they're going to wait. The industry is going to wait and see when they can rebuild the ships to build it back. They Their whole industry has been set back two years, uh, minimally. At least, yeah. You know, they're, they're, they're three, four, five years become, before they can be, become viable because... As soon as you mess with truth, you mess with trust. I mean, and you know, that- I really like what you're saying about creating an alternate narrative that's compassionate to the the needs of whoever is creating the disinformation or or misinformation. You can also make fun of it, or you can be compassionate toward it. I mean, really, Bill, all roads do sort of come back to empathy and compassion don't they i mean we talk yeah. about this a lot in terms of effective communication yeah the people at toyota didn't want to make a product that that 
that happened to kill somebody because the car shut off and the steering went out and and the person's going 30 miles an hour and they hit something and they and then the person died they don't want to make that product but at the same time is that we've got to have compassion towards a person that's thinking in a way that's really you know that has a tragic consequence you know that's that you know that that really causes you know that level of disconnect with the truth instead of just facing the mistake and facing the truth you know and 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 that's going to Uh, I mean, more about how media applies to this and what can be done in media and social media and in order to turn the tide, because we got to turn the tide, but also not lose our freedom of expression. So when a piece of information comes, uh, disinformation comes up or a piece of um, uh, misinformation or disinformation comes up, we've got to face it in a brand new way. And we'll talk about that more next time. All right. Sounds good, Bill. Thanks so much. Thanks everybody. All right. Bye. Thank you for listening to this purchasing truth podcast. We trust that you have enjoyed this engaging and thought provoking conversation. Our hope is that you've received value, found clarity and broadened your truth perspective in this episode. If you did, leave us a review or visit our website, purchasingtruth.com. Join us again for another informative and content-rich discussion here at the Purchasing Truth Podcast. Don't just accept whatever information comes your way. Join the discussion. Discover your own voice. Purchase your own truth.